Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger, what up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe. While we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Geek Enders with Dukes and Jessup. What up, people of Earth and beyond? Mm. I assume... Who knows? Who knows who could be listening? We're talking other dimensions, other realities, other worlds, or maybe none of the above. I know this is not Chaluminati, oddly nope. enough. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take any chances. I don't want to <laughs> un-include anyone. I see what you mean. Yeah. You want to make sure like, everybody uh, feels like they can be here. Yeah. Like, to infinity you know, and beyond. Glitlorp, Schnorgans, Grungus, mm-hmm. The Meech. Mm-hmm. All fantastic people that I may Where's or may not know from? who may or may not be real. Yeah. The Meech. Shout out Where's, to the Meech. Where's the Meech Shout from? out to the Meech and Grungus. You guys. They're the best. They sound like good drinking buddies. They are. Yeah, we, we drink uh, Spotchka together. The Meech is, is the one who, like, notices that you're missing and brings you water. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He's yeah. like... Grungus doesn't give a shit. Yeah. And I'm does. like, thanks, bud. He's like, yeah. Yeah. What is that reminding me of? The way that you were talking just then reminded me not of an alien, I don't believe. Oh, it reminded you of Missy Elliott, I believe. Yep. 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 Missy, Mr. Mean or Elliot. Yeah, absolutely. I get it. Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Meaner is would be another good name. Mr. Mr. Meaner? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> we were discussing names for like, the devil earlier. Yeah, Mr. but he's Meaner like, would be a good one. More mean medium and mode. You know what I mean? Like he's more about he's like the nerd. Sure. Yeah. Mr. Yeah, Meaner, Mr. Meaner is the is the the nerd of of which group? Yeah. The group of aliens and interdimensional beings I hang out with on the regular. I see. I'm so sorry. I'm you just know, trying to my make friends. sure I keep, I'm just trying to keep it all straight. That's all. <laughs> yeah. The Meech, not a fan of that dude. Mr. Meaner talks a big game about math, but mostly it's drug related. Right. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. It's true. <laughs> uh welcome to the show, everyone. You can tell we have no guest because this intro is bonkers um today we're gonna talk about something very important to me okay some might say the most important thing in the world honestly <clears throat> so alan wake 2 had a new dlc this week and it was great and i absolutely loved it okay go on uh it is a thing they've been doing uh lately i'm gonna say lately i think since control dlc I don't remember, <laughs> like no i mean like uh i was trying <laughs> You roasted me and I feel uh, <laughs> the way they work, at least what they're doing so far is like they'll do, for example, in control, they had mm. control and they had a first DLC that was like, pew, 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 it's the shooting DLC. And then they had their second DLC, which was, there's going to be some lore and it's going to lead to the next game. Okay. And so it was like Alan Wake stuff. And then for uh, Alan Wake 2, they mm-hmm. have this new DLC, which is the lake house. And it is a... Uh, very scary, not at all cool uh, uh, 
monster fest that is a teaser for what's going to happen i assume in their next multiplayer game firebreak and mm -hmm. control 2 which is the um one that's being worked on with annapurna and i believe they're gonna do like a tv show or something i have no clue what's going on can't wait it's gonna be great um <laughs> can't wait love it here's all i need to know about this expansion it like besides the final boss being like a one shot Andy and just uh -huh. constantly destroying me and me screaming at the thing. Um, yes. It he, here's here's what if you don't know the setup for the Remedy Verse, um, at the top over all of it is the Federal Bureau of Control, and it's basically like if you need a analog to something that I think people might know about is uh, imagine SCP. Right, all the SCP things that you can read online, mm -hmm. and you can it's like basically a containment facility, this big uh government organization that controls possible alternate realities and weird monstery things and stuff happening in the world. They run that stuff. It's very men in blacky, very SCP, that kind of thing. Anyway, um, they have locations all over the world studying all sorts of weird stuff, and one of them is the lake house and it is there that they're studying the phenomenon that is happening in alan wake so there that's like the top down version of what's happening and so um while they're doing this study of the phenomenon of alan wake they're trying to replicate what is happening in the alan wake franchise so if you've never played alan wake um the basic premise is that it's a writer whose wife goes missing while they're on a lake and then he uh like goes nuts trying to find her because everyone's like dude i don't know what you're talking about there isn't even a cabin on that lake and he's going crazy and the um bad guy the mystery the thing that we don't really know right now is that opposing alan wake is something in the lake that is a malevolent force some sort of like thing that is trying to mess with him and escape from whatever dimension is in the lake like that's the above board like overview of what the alan wake franchise is about and one of the things that is interesting about it is that this thing that's in the lake draws artists to it mm -hmm. and it then abuses the thing that i think all artists be it us doing this kind of nonsense or like sure. a painter or a writer it basically is like I'm going to latch on to the dark aspect of the fact that you think you suck and that everything that you create is trash. And I'm going to like, just abuse that over and over and over again and use you to escape. So, um, the, the, the lake house as, as like a, a FBC organization is like, Hey, what if we study this phenomenon and bring in a bunch of like people to study them? And so there's two in a very funny, I, I love this idea. There's two doctors, they're married. They both have the last name. So every time you read something about them, you're reading about like one of the two, but the two doctors are like, okay, here's our plans. Doctor one is going to uh, create a bunch of kind of like AI kind of to copy Alan Wake's writing style so that Alan can, uh, uh, like they can tap into whatever Alan Wake was doing. The other is like, hey, what if instead of Alan Wake, we do art? So let's go kidnap an artist and make him paint a bunch of stuff and we'll see if that connects. <clears throat> so now you have these two doctors who are doing tests and one of them is an artist and all I'll say is something happens, it goes down and when you show up as uh, Janina Gavankar, who is the Agent Estevez in the game, when you show up, Everything is painted. All the walls are painted. And one of the things this game does that I love but hate is that in the paint, there are figures. And every so often, the figures come out of the paint and attack you. And here's the thing. They do what they did in Alan Wake 2, which is the sneakiest, meanest thing in the world. In Alan Wake 2, there'd be shadow people and they'd be like, Wake wake and they talk to him they'd be like alan wake in the background you wouldn't okay. know which one was going to attack you there'd be shadows everywhere and then one minute you turn a corner a shadow would jump out and try to kill you and you're like 
what the hell? So they do the same thing here where there's paint people everywhere, but only like one out of every 12 actually attacks you. And you don't know which one it is. And sometimes it's random. So you're just walking around and like you, you, you'll turn to be like something like a paint dude on the wall. And you'll be like, what the hell do I do here? And you walk past it. It's fine. Sometimes you'll do a whole room and the paint guy will be sitting there and they'll be like, all right, cool. And then you'll go to leave and it'll be like, gotcha, bitch. Every, oh my God, how dare they? Oh my God. That's not like, I loved it. I had a blast. It dropped so much lore. Uh, there's definitely information about the Control 2 sequel in there. Um, it's a lot of cool stuff. Absolutely, like very much lore heavy can't believe how much i enjoy it it is uh a brilliant game but all of alan wake 2 is is brilliant like it's yeah. it's so good i'm glad you liked it, it sounds yeah like it was really it. cool it is uh brutal <laughs> they <laughs> are you still DLC, working on it or have you finished it i beat it um the dlc is like i, I don't know if someone complained about Al so alan wake 2 gives you a lot of stuff. I, I don't know, maybe if you play it on hard mode, but I just played it on normal. You get a lot of like ammo and health packs. You get so much stuff to make it through the game. Um, when you uh, play the DLC, there, like, I think I found five health packs the entire time. I was, oh, no. like, I spent a lot of time just like limping. <laughs> I'm like, oh God, oh God. But what's funny, I think it's really creative. The more you get attacked by the paint monsters, the more your F uh, FBC jacket has like streaks of paint on it. Oh, cool. I was like, that's cool as <laughs> I hell. I love little touches like that. Yeah, yeah. That was really neat. Um, I saw someone say, can I play Alan Wake 2 without playing 1? Literally, they've designed it so you can. Hilariously, there is a whole section of Alan Wake 2 that is a retelling of Alan Wake 1 that's like, just to get you caught up. <laughs> and so, yeah, if anything, control Perfect. is probably more necessary because uh, the FBC shows up and I don't wait too as part of the story. So control like, is so good, by the way. So, such a worthwhile yeah. play. Absolutely. Like, can't even believe how well that game like uh, it just scratched every itch I have in video gaming to the point like uh, I've never fell in love with the game more. Like it was control is basically if you play the weirdest Jesse game ever, but also the coolest Star Wars game ever, you <laughs> literally have force powers. You can pick up stuff and like toss it at enemies like you're a cool Jedi. You fly around. It's cool as hell. Love mm -hmm. it. So I must stress absolutely thrilled about the future of Remedy and all their stuff. They do not disappoint. I'm so pleased. If you like, Alamite 2 is so perfectly trippy that. It's somehow I th uh, is like making all of their games canonical. Mm. Like the games that even Xbox owns. It's like, look, we're not going to mention the name, but like, you know what we're talking about. It's like, <laughs> you oh, get what okay. this is, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Love that stuff. Big fan. <laughs> yep. Uh -oh. That I've been playing that and I did. I'm still chugging away at metaphor. That game is so good. I saw like, that you were streaming it yesterday i think yeah absolutely still for my camera died yesterday so now i'm on a webcam so hopefully it still looks good but um I, fortunately uh, we live in an era of pretty decent webcams you know yeah 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 um i wow i just i can't i can't even believe how much i enjoy metaphor it is uh, everything that i love about persona minus the fact that there's a lot of stuff in persona i don't like Right. Where it's just it's, like, it's the stuff you enjoy from persona mm -hmm. without, without the shit you don't care about. Absolutely. Yeah. There's so, I mean, there's, you know, as much as I love a good romance, your fellow NPC party members, as much as I love, uh, like, what are you going to do in class today? <laughs> it takes so long for persona games to get going into like those stuff. I love the fact that this thing is like, yo, let's get crazy immediately and then mm -hmm. it keeps going and i don't know something about it just clicks and i'm feeling every bit of it do you have any sort of a gauge on how far into the game you are i don't think i'm far at all 
to be honest. How many hours I, in uh, are you? Oh boy. Um it's supposed to be maybe like twelve to a hundred, right? Yeah, I'm I'm not even at twenty hours. I, I okay. I know that I've got a lot of time because I went to go raid JP and he was playing it, and I was on whatever the equivalent of July 30th was, and he was on like August second or something like that and i was like okay i got a lot of i got a lot to catch up on right um i'm very curious you know where the story goes but so far i'm in i'm in the basic premise which is there's a king who is dead and they need a replacement and it has been decreed that the way it's going to work is by popularity contest whoever wins over the people will become the next king and so um yeah, I'm like in the middle of my quest to go do that, where it's like, we got to go win people over. So let's go here and here and here. And I'm like, yeah, OK. And uh, I will. It's it's. It is both very high fantasy, but also has the persona touches, which I love. So there's one thing that happens in your uh, like airship, not airship. Th basically, it's an airship, but it has legs. Um, your airship, that's not an airship. Uh, every five days, if you go to the bathroom, you get a luck point. <laughs> and your guy goes like i've heard Ugh. that and i guess it w there's no cap on it you can just keep doing it yeah, yeah every five days you can go back and keep <laughs> getting so luck funny. up yeah and i love that like things like that are very persona feeling but then the game is just like go to the forest kill the goblins I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll do that and then you go to the forest fight the goblins and then it's like now you can go back to town or keep fighting those goblins because you get an archetype to level and i'm like i do have an archetype to level. all right yeah no i'm gonna do i'm doing this yeah that's where i'm at right now where the la i last ended in the middle of a dungeon and i was like i'm not gonna guys i'm gonna end here because off stream i'm about to power grind this entire thing <laughs> until i can one shot all these guys like just letting you know um yeah it's a yeah. it's a treat it feels good here's the problem we are how many days away? A week away from even more games that I want to play badly. And I just, I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. That's, that's um, where we're at. I took your advice and played Neva. Did you um, cry? I cried a lot. Yeah. I cried basically. Neva is so good. Dude, I cried basically the second the game started. Um, yeah. And, and had little, little dribbles throughout the game and then cried again at the end uh yep. yeah it was great it was short took like three and a half four hours i think something like that yeah um but yeah gorgeous uh i i think you know it's got somebody somebody was calling that game and gris grease gris walking simulators this game has a lot of combat in it i would not call this a walking simulator at all i think that's really doing it a disservice um you I, can I think play that people... it. You can play it in a way where you don't have combat. I think. I think there's a way to play it where it's it's interesting. Just, where you just want to like look at the beautiful story. art and stuff. Mm. I mean, um, I I think that uh, everyone who said walking simulator are people who just either saw Greece or played Greece because that was like you're jumping around. It's like artsy. It looks very beautiful. It's like telling a story. But it is this a puzzle is, game. Greece is. Yeah, this is the next level up where you're fighting and you have to solve the puzzles while, like, yeah, absolute disservice to this game to say mm. it's a, like, it's not. It's clearly a well thought out, like, platforming combat action game where you also have to manage a pup and uh, solve puzzles by slashing. Like, it's, nah, that's a stupid, that's a stupid take. You're stupid <laughs> for your stupid take, Damn. internet person. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. The every single new area I went to, every time the game was like, and now you're just gonna run with Neva for a while, I would be thinking to myself, this game is gorgeous. Every area you run through, the way it transitions between zones, like it's just beautiful. Yeah. Um Yeah. Loved it. The 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 first I don't wanna like spoil stuff, but the first area where you fight a boss mm. is like has the exact same, I, I, I don't know if like visual quality is the right word, but it has the exact same like emotional resonance as like when you do the uh, big first fight in Sekiro 
or you have like that vibe of just like walking through the reeds and it's about to go down and like let's do this very very nice absolutely mm. love just every aspect of this game plus if anything happens to your poor pup my god it is like i will murder the world Dude. I do not, do not hurt that boy. I will kill you and your family and your family. Like, it gets you. It makes you care. Yeah. The the game, um, I think, I was, <laughs> I was saying, this might sound really sadistic, but I really want Sam to play this game. It's not his sort of game at all. But sure. when, when that dog is a puppy, it looks exactly like our dog. <laughs> and I was like, bro. I want Sam to play this game so bad just because the whole time that I was playing it, I was like, it looks just like Peach. And then some, something would happen to the dog and I'd be like, no! <laughs> it, on, uh, I know people in chat are joking, but like it does turn you into a little bit of John Wick. Like you, if yeah. anything happens to that pup, you're just like, <gasps> it's you all down. die today. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah, that is a, a tremendous game. It's Love beautiful. it. And it doesn't take a lot of your time. And it just is like a beautiful quick romp with a with the sweet pup. Yeah. That you'll cry a bunch. Yes. In. Um, I played I also played a another game that was only like four bucks, but I'm enjoying it a lot. And I think if you really sat down with it, especially if you're good with city builders, um, I think you could probably crack this one out in a couple hours as well. Um, but it's called Technotopia. And it is a casual city builder. Um, it's a little bit, it's kind of like Dorf Romantic meets Reigns. If you, if you played either of those games, I know Jesse's played Reigns. I don't know about Dorf yeah. Romantic, but essentially it has the, um, you have a deck and the cards represent tiles aspect of Dorf Romantic. Um, you're given different shapes that you can make with similar tiles that will do things for you. So you do want to like think a lot about placement. Um, but the 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 way that it's reigns ish is in the fact that uh, the idea of the game is you are an AI that has been created to figure out how to have a perfectly balanced city. So there are four different groups of people that you were trying to um, keep balanced amongst each other. There mm. is the 1%, the government, um, big business, and the common, the common folk, essentially. So, so that's the reins part. Yes. So everything that you do, every building, um, gives points to a different group. Um, and as the longer that you play, you unlock bigger buildings that do more specific things that give you more points in one way or another or mm. um, help other buildings, you know, like produce more or. Um, and uh, there are events that affect the influence of those groups. So every week there will be some sort of an event that's like um, this rich girl ran over somebody they're, they want to like pay off the government to sure. um, make it so that she doesn't have to go to court, right? But you're the AI and you can interfere if you want. So it'll say like, do you want to interfere in X, Y, or Z way? Or do you want to just say, no, that's not my business. Um, and depending on what you do, uh, in the eyes of the city in general, it will seem as though one group has more or less influence based on what happens with that, right? So mm -hmm. if if this, you know, upper crust girl manages to just walk away and not go to court, then it seems like the elite are being treated with preferential treatment, right? Right. So then they gain more influence in the city. It's that sort of a situation. There are tons of events. Um, and the thing that I really like about it, and I think one of the things that makes it more casual feeling is that um, if, if you... If one of the groups goes down to zero, basically every week, like the the social, physical, whatever taxes on that group of people resolve themselves. And if they don't have enough, if they haven't been given enough resources over the course of that week, um, then they'll go down to zero or under zero. Right. And then you crash out. So the idea is that they reset the A.I. They like reboot you and you start over. Mm. Um but everything that you've done, all of the like big story stuff that you've done is still there. 
So you've been rebooted, but the city is still like the people and where they're at mentally and the things they're asking for maintains. Um, it's kind of like, um, I don't, is the most recent reigns? One of the, one of the, one of the reigns games where they did uh, dynasty warriors, right? They did rents with their kingdoms. The premise of that was you're traveling back in time via some machine to inhabit the body of an ancestor of yours. I think that's what it is. And uh, every time you die or lose or fail, you pop back to the future and they're like, so how'd it go? So I think it's very similar in that where instead of popping back to the future, it's like the AI resets. And then it's like, all right, everything you did is fine. We're just going to send you further in the future to We're a different ancestor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think it's great. It's got this fantastic art deco, like art style. Um, and it's only like four bucks. So I highly awesome. recommend it's I'm I typically don't do great with city builders because a lot of times they have a lot of minutia that you need to keep track of. This one sure. does not. You've just got those four mm. stats and you've got to you've got to sort of do again the same thing as with reigns where <laughs> at first when you start playing, you're like, well, fuck big business. Right. Like, I don't I don't want them to, you know, be doing X, Y or Z. I want the common man. But you can't just be for one group because you die immediately. You have to you have to be like playing and placating all of these different groups in different mm -hmm. ways. Um, so you get to this point where you're like, I'm just unfeeling AI. I'm choosing whatever I need to choose, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, yeah. I was going to ask if you uh, had played Frostpunk 2, but I realized when you said you're not in the city management, I was like, all right, never mind. But that <laughs> no. has a very similar mechanic too, which I, I think you would love, which is there's a Congress. And in order to get anything done in your city, you have to get it approved by them. So you're playing kind of everyone. So there's different, like the techno union. And there's like, uh, these are the people who are the wilderness survival people. And these are the people like, and as you develop things, new groups will pop up. So they'll be like, oh, um, you spent a lot of time in science and now there's a whole like science group of nerds who have formed a voting block. Or if you spend a lot of time like doing mercantile work, you'll get like that group of people. And so now you have to like balance it out and placate everyone. And mm. you know, if you don't take care of a certain thing, people go on strike. You're like, Oh my God. What? A yeah. Right? So you gotta do all that. And what's interesting is then, Anytime you want to put some sort of new law into effect, it'll take you to that screen of all the different people on your, on your, like, uh, your Congress. And it'll be like, okay, so 38% support what you're trying to do. You got to go win some votes. And it's like, okay, uh, yes, yeah, so here's what I'll do. No taxes on you guys for like, I don't know, 10 months, let's say. And just like, keep kissing ass and try to get like, all right, I can make this vote happen. And then it's like a little <laughs> voting screen and it's like, and it tallies it up. And I'm like, this is pretty fun. It's uh, it's very interesting to see what you can get away with. Mm. But what ended up happening is you'll have people, you'll have at the bottom of the screen, these different people who are like, so we saw what you did there. <clears throat> so we're just going to stop working for a few days. And you're like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, Something that I noticed in this game, this would be the last thing I say about it, but some, something that I noticed in this game was that um, there's kind of like a hidden fifth faction almost that um that pops up a lot and it's crime <laughs> like criminals sure. um and so occasionally when an event pops up there will just be a symbol of a gun <laughs> <laughs> that means like in some mm -hmm. way it'll affect the like criminal underbelly of, <laughs> of the town <laughs> which is so funny that's um, i i have to play this this is really yeah, neat it's great it's yeah. very cute uh and then um I played the most Krender bait game ever, which I'm going to be so shocked if he hasn't played this, but I finally played web fishing. Have you played that yet? No. no. What do you mean? Web fishing? No. Web fishing. This game is, it's so simple. It's like the perfect game. The reason that I say it's Krender bait, it's mostly fishing. Also, the characters look like the reject Animal Crossing neighbors. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. And you, you basically, you just fish. That's the whole thing. You just fish. You try to get all of the fish. There's a, there, um, at a certain point, I think 
um, you know, you're just gaining money and don't really have much to spend it on unless you want to buy all of the, like, there's tons of clothes and faces and things that you can buy. I think the dev is, is adding more like animal bodies. Currently you can be a cat or a dog basically, but I think they're going to be adding different ones. Um, and, uh, you can choose to spend your money on scratch tickets. It's, there's, there's just like a couple of silly things you can do in this game. Um, but it's more than anything. It's a, I'm going to hop into a voice call with a friend and we're both going to sit and fish and just shoot the shit. Like it's perfect for that. You know, I, I must stress all the reviews for this are awesome, but the <laughs> best one, I'm just going to read this review to everyone. Uh, this is from Oregon, Oregon, can't even speak origami army um <clears throat> yeah this is a hardcore fishing me and the lads we clock off our 12-hour unpaid shift down at the lead grinding factory absolutely knackered covered in lead dust and what do we do straight to the water we're into a 12-hour session of hardcore web fishing we crack open a few stubbies sit around whinging about the misses and the bloody asbestos we copped as kids playing at the old dump i'll tell you you haven't lived till you slid down an asbestos hill me and the boys customize our animals to reflect the 12 hour unpaid shift at the lead grinding factory. We bring the kids along sometimes too. They try to catch a few fish, but mostly we tell them to toughen up uh, while they play jump off the lighthouse and break no bones. Okay. My boy Gort, he's a legend now. No bones broken, jumping off the lighthouse, real tough little bugger. Every now and then me and the boys hit up a shack in town and torment the rat. She's a good sport. Loves it, honestly. Oh, and I love to see barbecues added so I can grill. I want to grill my fish with my boys. <laughs> That's it. That's the review. And I love that review. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> I want to grill some fish with my boys. I just want to grill I, some I, fish I love, with my I boys. I hope they add a grill. Is he going to sit there and keep grilling? That's hilarious. That's a good review. Um. My favorite part is uh, you can get little fishing buddies, quote unquote, and they're just buckets. I think that's what he's talking about. Yeah, there's just buckets with little with little frogs in them and you can upgrade them. And I swear to God, most of the time I'm just fishing, catching just, you know, basic ass fish. And it goes, one of your buddies has caught a fish and you go over there and it is the largest shark you've ever seen in your life. You're like, how the fuck did this man catch a massive shark in a bucket? I'm so impressed. <laughs> it's great. I, I just, all the reviews are so funny. The human race is simply better off for this having been made. It's a benefit <laughs> to mankind on the same level as fire or electricity. <laughs> his, his reviews are so good. Uh, it's cute, man. It's cute. It's cute. It looks cute. Um, I also, um, we, we might be, if you're free, we might be um, playing a little bit of this after Geek Enders, but um, uh, I also tried out with Octo last night the Jackbox Survey Scramble, which is the new Jackbox game. And I think they literally just said, um, man, you know, a lot of people really like the games where they just type in a thing and then sit back and let the game do the rest of the work. So it's all mini games based on survey questions and answers. Interesting. Um, so Jackbox survey. Scramble. If we play, do you want, am I calling into the, am I using my phone? Is that the vibe? It's the same as all the other Jackbox games. Yeah. So you just go I just to Jackbox sure TV. Do I need to buy it is what I'm asking. No. Great. I have Easy. it. Love that. I have it. Love that for me. Yes. Um, yeah, so like one of them, one of the games is uh, try to, you know, here's a, a survey question with 400 answers. Try to guess the, you know, number one answer. And then at a certain point, it'll be like, just kidding. Try to guess the lowest answer. <laughs> you know, um, one, of the one of the games is uh, try to fill out as many answers as possible. Octo and I were terrible at that one. That was crazy. We were sweating so bad. Uh, one of them is tic-tac-toe, basically. So, like, um, it'll, you know, it'll be, like, one box is the number one through number six answer. One box is the number seven through number ten answer. 
And so you're trying to figure out like, oh my God, okay, in order for me to like get a diagonal, I have to figure out what would be like a really low answer. It's like that sort of thing. It's it's funny. The last Great. one is Buckwild Bonkers. It it was so hard and neither of us enjoyed it at all. <laughs> it's Pong. But you basically all along the bottom of the screen, it goes from one to a hundred, I think. And there's a ball really slowly bouncing and you have to, you have to try to guess an answer in the right spot to create the word so that the ball will hit the word in the right spot. That it's, sounds anxiety. I, we were both like, fuck this actually. <laughs> just let ourselves die it was so we'll try it but it was so yeah. <laughs> bro i was like oh, i hate this dude <laughs> the question the question was so funny but we we literally were like i don't know the question was unconventional places to poop and we were we wound we were saying shit like on a friend in your hand in a hole in i don't know <laughs> In a hole is actually pretty conventional. Yeah, it was one of the top answers. But it didn't mean that the ball hit it. <laughs> so what's a good answer between in a hole and in my hand? <laughs> I don't know. It was crazy. So we gave up and died. <laughs> that, yeah, I wouldn't know. I, I, I would just start being like in a bucket. In a bucket. Uh, in the in the fry the fryer at Wendy's. In yeah. uh yeah. So in yeah, a, but in a, it's in the school it's hallway. It's just yeah, I just started typing stuff in. Did you did you ever get super into any of the Jackbox games? Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh the one where you write a a, a statement but also have to draw a thing and then it makes a shirt out of it, it combines them and makes TKO. the shirt. Is it that one? Uh, I don't, maybe, I think it's, I don't remember what it's called, it's but it's the TKO. shirt one where at the end they're like, you could buy this shirt if you want yeah. to. I've seen so many, like some of the f like hardest laughs I've ever had have been from that game. Yeah. Octo is the saying, cause he, he, Octo was also saying that that was one of his favorites and he was like, TKO is weird. Cause it's one of those games where you're just kind of like kind of having an okay time. And then suddenly you're laughing so hard. You're pissing your pants. Like it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like it goes, it goes from nothing to a hundred immediately. <laughs> yes, I love that one. I love the murder one where your little tiny pincushion kids are killed. Um, Me too. And I, I, even the ones like, even the ones that I think people generally hate, like the rap one. It's always people trying way too hard in that one. But I love yeah. that one too. Like I, I, yeah, I'm a big fan of all of them, even the old ones that were just like, here's a, a quiz. And I'm going to talk to you like this. I, yeah. Yeah. They're all, they're all great. Big fan. Do you think games like um, Quiplash have become sort of like, uh, they feel on the same level as, um, oh my God, what's that card game? Cards Against Humanity. Yes. Where it's like, there's nothing wrong with the game, but, but everybody makes the same jokes every time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like I mean, they're honestly, not. Honestly. Those games are all about playing to your odd. Like you think yes. you're the funny one. Just look around the room, look at the answers and be like, all right, my next answers are going to be like jizz. Yep. And yeah. Butt. And like, <laughs> I all hate right. that so like, much. You, you know, you think you get onto something and then everyone's like, <laughs> okay, moving on. You know, like I put so much time into that answer. Fine. Yep. You that's know what? Sam from now I... on, I'm going to be like Jesse's tiny dick. You know, like that's going to be, and then people will be like, <laughs> and I'm like, one time we were play we played that game with Sam's family one time when um a not insignificant number of them had had a couple of drinks and yeah. it, dude the winning answer every time had something to do with Sam's mom every single time and everyone was yep. like hilarious and I was like all right <laughs> Yeah, we it's about both figuring like, out, like, all right, I know who my we audience is. We can't win is. here. <laughs> we're not yeah, going to bother. Like, all right, <laughs> I'll dumb it down. Like, when we were at, uh, when we did it at CoxCon one year, everyone, the first two rounds, everyone started out and was like, here's what we're going to do. It's going to be funny jokes. And eventually someone, everything became like, 
a Coxcon joke. And from mm-hmm. that point on, every answer was like, you know, getting on the hotel at Coxcon, like drinking too much of guy. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. yep. Here, here we are. I know what this is now. All right, let's all do this. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's why I think the shirt one's the best one. It is TKO. Everyone in chat was like, TKO? I think it's the best one because you're just writing stuff and then drawing a thing and then it does the work for you and everyone just votes on what's funniest. Yeah. And so, so like, what, the, the one that got me the most is someone drew like a frog on a bicycle and then underneath it, it said like, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> like, I was like, That's really funny. And I don't know why. <laughs> It was just like a really crappy frog on a bike, and it made me laugh oh so hard. <laughs> I love yeah. that. It was great. That's very cute. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I expected, like, whoever it was that was like, we got to bring Jackbox games back into, into like, the space. We got to <laughs> figure out how to modernize this shit. They really crushed it. Yep. Because for those of you who don't know, Jackbox games have been around for a very long time. <laughs> a really yeah. long time. I don't even want to look up how many. I remember Jackbox 8 being a thing. I don't want to look up how many there are. Because <laughs> it'll make me. It's uh, I I'm saw gonna. a thing today. I'm not sure about the accuracy of it, but it made me feel very old. Like, yeah, you know, it's one of those things where we're having the conversation about Lord of the Rings. It was like, you know, that came out in 2001. You're like, Ugh. I saw. <laughs> Someone post a thing about the Pepe Silvia bit from Always Sunny, and they said, this is now 16 years old. I was like, no, <laughs> no. I didn't even want to look no. it up to verify that was accurate. I was just like, no, 16 years. I was like, no. So. Okay. The original You Don't Know Jack is from 1995. So cool. So cool. It's pretty spicy. That's right. It did start as you don't know Jack, and then it became Jackbox because they combined mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff. Yeah. What was the first Jackbox game? Uh, I don't know. First Jackbox Party Pack was 2014, but actually, okay. Jackbox game. I you mean, don't know I think, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Jackbox Party Pack is what I meant. Yeah, the Party Pack series started in 2014. Um, mm. the you don't know Jack games. There was. You don't know Jack. You don't know There's Jack like Party. Sure. Um, I don't know. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's been around for a long time. I mean, the inclusion of being able to use your phones and just go to a website is the smartest thing they ever did. So smart. They made it yeah. so easy to to actually turn it into a party game. Yeah. What's crazy is there was a time period where I think it was Sony was trying to do that with their games too. They were like, if you bring your phone, everyone can play. I think it might have been Supermassive that was trying to do that. I can't remember. Mm. But I, I it was there was, was a time where they were trying out fun stuff. I feel like that's something Sony does a lot of where they try a thing, they do it once, and then they're like, nah. <laughs> we tried one time. Yeah. Um meanwhile, Nintendo will be like, we made an entire console where every game you have to jiggle like a crazy person. And everyone, people are like, what? And they're like, yep, we did it. Well, you know what? We might do it again. It's like, oh, okay. Back up, everybody. Yeah, Sony just never goes in. They're like, yeah, give it a tr- try it. And then someone does, and they're like, meh. <laughs> Moving on. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah. No. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know at what point. like like. I guess it's the opposite or maybe it's in the same line as a sunk cost fallacy, right? They're like, we just don't want to sink a bunch of time and energy into this and have it not work out, but they don't, they don't stick with it long enough ever. Right. Is the issue. I mean, that's the biggest problem. I think with all of entertainment and media and technology and everything right now, where it's like, what's the cost benefit of us spending a bunch of money to try something new versus doing a thing we already know sells uh, you know, the best example I can think of, I'm not mm-hmm. going to call anyone out, but I think we all know that we've seen this before in social media and the social media game, right? A lot of influencers, TikTokers, YouTubers, whatever will, and this is like a thing and it works. It definitely works. They will make a short, they'll make a TikTok, release it. Then 
If it does well, they'll take the exact same short, exact same TikTok, tweak it slightly, re-release it. And they'll do that like four or five times, and people will see either one, it's a thing they've seen before and they like, or two, it hits a whole new audience because of the minor tweaks, and they see it and they like it. And so you'll see on many of these, if you go to like their actual site, because you know, TikToks or whatever, you're just scrolling through. So you never really think to go visit Mm. their TikTok channel. But if you go there, you'll see like six of the same TikTok with a million views a piece. And they're just like, because that one did well. We're just going to keep making it. It's a thing. And rather than, okay, let's try something new. It's like, no, 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 no. Let's keep making the same thing over and over again. And it's the same thing in, in, in video games. They're just like, it's a lot of money. And they keep getting scared that like, if we spend all that money and it doesn't do well, so let's make the 12th version of the same thing. And you're like, the diminishing no. returns, how do you not notice? But whatever, it's Damn. absolutely crazy to me. Yeah. How weird. I, I'll but that, never... I mean, that's why the, the indie space is so good, but they're $4.99 fishing games and stuff, you know, like, that's what that's what we need. We need people in the indie space to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to try something weird and different. And we talked about it last week. It mm, pays off. For sure. I'm never going to knock somebody for being like, I figured out another way to use this exact same footage sure. that I have or whatever. There's a there's a cooking channel that I used to watch all the time. And he would straight up upload a video that was like, um, cooking the thing with backing music and explaining what he's doing throughout the video. And then he'd re-upload it without his explanation. So that it was just nice music and cooking. And then he'd re-upload it a third time with no backing music so that it was just the ASMR of cooking. And all three of them hit totally different audiences and they sure. all did super well. And I was like, bro, get the bag. <laughs> like, that's so no, smart. Like, that's the thing is that it's brilliant. I mean, I can't knock it. It's the same thing with the TikToks. Like mm. they are clearly playing the game well. It's just one of those things that that is a diminishing return over time. Like you're clearly doing it. You're playing it well, but you know, if you keep uploading three videos, for example, like eight of the same TikTok, it may not happen now and it may not happen next year, but eventually People be like, okay, all right, and they'll move on. <laughs> yeah, like it's just that's what's gonna happen. And so when you have a company like Ubisoft, for example, where for twenty five years they've been slowly just making the same thing, people are like, all right, enough. Yeah. No, but but the thing is, they made a bunch of money to make the same thing over and over and over again. So. You know, to them, they're like, well, every year we keep making money, but eventually it, it doesn't pay off is what I'm, is what I'm, is what I'm saying. Mm. So I don't know. It's, uh, it's the way of the industry, I suppose. Yeah. But um, yeah, shout out to people taking chances. Speaking of taking a chance, I believe it was last week. I think you brought this up. Okay. Um, the, the hollow live. Uh, th was this you? There was, I was, I don't know, I don't know who told me this. The Hollow Live Vampire Survivors game. Was no. that you? That might someone have been, someone said who. it was talked about on Dropped Frames. You were on Dropped Frames, right? Ah, that's right. Look, they all blend together. They all that's blend okay. together. Yes. Yes. On Dropped Frames. Oh, boy. Wait, so what's it called? It's a Hollow Live game, but it's called Hollow Cure. Okay. And... They were talking about it because I was talking about how I was playing Vampire Survivors. I was playing, I even played Wedding Witch. I was playing a bunch of different versions. I was like, it turns out I really enjoy this genre, which I did not know I Bullet would at heavens. all. Heavens. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so everyone's like, you got to play that. And I was like, fine. So I started, I, I downloaded, I think it's free too. Uh, I downloaded Holocure and I was like, the minute you jump in, it, it's like, there's a lot of characters. I was like, I don't know who any of these people are. I don't know who this little anime girl is. I don't know what any of these people are. And they're like, oh no, they're, they're, they're like a uh, VTubers. I'm like, yeah, okay. Still doesn't mean I know who any of these people are, but like, <laughs> all right, I'll play. Sure. I started playing and it's really well done. Like it, it, it <laughs> honestly feels better than wedding, Witch, which is even more funny to me. And, um, it is just straight up, just 
all these different characters and they have synergies and you can like upgrade the characters very gotcha y in some levels. So you're not paying for anything, but it's like you can you can roll on some characters, but instead of getting a new character, you get like the upgraded version of one you have, that kind of thing. And you can, you know, spend the in-game money to buy upgrades and stuff. It, 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 Vampire Survivors, it's like what it is. Right. But it is also just so steeped in what I assume is hollow live lore. Like you sure. are playing a character who has magic abilities and each one's different. So like one girl looks like a little detective and she has a gun and it goes <laughs> pew, pew, pew. But she also has a puppy dog that can join her and fight. And I'm like, who the hell's that? What's that? How's that work? I played this uh, girl yesterday on stream just to show people. I was like, guys, I love this game. Uh, she shoots a tentacle. I don't know who, I don't know what that tentacle, she shoots a tentacle, but then that tentacle shoots more tentacles. Okay. And then I, w I was in the hollow live offices fighting men who go <laughs> when they attack you. I, there was a, there's like an Asian man who keeps popping up that I have to beat up. I don't know who he is. There's a, like at the end, a giant chibi anime girl attacked me. And I was like, I don't know who that is. Okay. There's weird. All the creatures look like, um, that little guy who was remember car captain Sakura and she had like a little like hey I'm the little guy like yep. they look like that guy okay I don't know what the hell that guy is they got uh, everything about this I was just like guys I don't know what's happening I don't know why I'm playing a little girl who has tentacles for hair but also shoots tentacles I don't know what what this is loved every minute of it I it's the most confusing thing I've ever seen in my entire life I cannot explain it it's great. We should it's try so to get good. a hollow live person on the show. Sure. I think that would be great. I don't know anything about hollow. I literally know nothing. Me neither. I, I assume. Great. I like, assume Jesse's I should. Jesse's super but it was, into the game. <laughs> I am. I don't know. There's so many. The best part is, is, is there's clearly like, um, you know, when you talk to people who are fans of Critical Role and they talk to you about their favorite character from one of the three seasons, but there's so many characters like, I don't know. I have no context for what you're saying right now. Same thing where this game has all these characters. And when you go to gotcha game, grab them, there's like gen one, gen two, like, uh, the, the cool kids, the kids, like there's all these different groups. It's like, I don't, should I pick from one, which is the one I need? What, who's the cool one? Right. I have no answers. It's just it, it like, <sighs> it's just an incredible game and it blew my mind that i was i was like guys i, I love this i love this <laughs> game but i don't i it might be my favorite vampire survivor like i'm like this is amazing and i think and amazing. it's free for like a free game that's incredible yeah so shout out to their shameless promotion and merchandising for that game because they apparently got me yeah apparently it's done got well me. yeah i, I don't <laughs> again I don't understand a damn thing that is happening in that game. I, like an enemy will show up and I'll, a great example is I play when you play the girl who has the tentacles, when you kill enemies, I've never seen this in any other, the enemies turn into ghosts and then they'll come towards you. And if you eat them, you get like buffs or something. Okay. And I'm like, is this part of this character's lore that she eats ghosts or maybe or is it part, like, what is the, she has a magic book and the book explodes the ground with uh, hellfire or what? I'm like, Apparently I don't know what is Apparently it's a fan-made game. It's not even like an official game. It's incredible. It's like so well done. You know it's how so I know? Wild. You know how I know that Hollow Live is like bigger than I'll ever get? Like some dude out of the kindness of his heart was like, I'm like, I've been blessed. I've been blessed to have some like very creative people make a, uh, you know, like little tribute things for us in the past where it's been like little mini games or on Illuminati, we got two really fun, like very short games made where we like go around like point and click. Love that stuff. Cute. But never in my life have I seen someone take what is clearly a lot of time. I, <laughs> there is no Jesse and Dodger version of this that I think can even equal, you know what I mean? Like right. clearly yeah. their fandom is so big and widespreading. They got like, there's passion put into this, like passion. This dude mm. has the talent to have made games for money. And he's like, please, no. I'm gonna do this for free. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. So, yeah, I, I mean, uh -huh. like 
yeah, I'm impressed. If we, all I'm saying is, look, all I'm saying is for the people who have made little Jesse games over the years, where's my hollow live game? Where, where <laughs> put me in, just, just go steal the source code and don't steal the source code. Go don't steal the source code and just put me in there. Just put me in. Just boop, put me in. Mm. You're talented. Boop, put me in it. I love That's it. my Hall Live character. <laughs> Little JC, the Hall Live character. Yep. Yeah, done. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Yep. Yep. Easy. Just join Hollow. That's a, that sounds like a lot of work. That sounds mm, that sounds like a lot of work. You just gotta you just gotta be the the little ramen dog. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> no, I'm all right. My mom would be like, Jesse, did we not love you enough? What happened? Why are you a ramen dog now? That doesn't. What is, what happened to you? I have to I have to explain that to them. Sure. Be rough. Yeah. The struggle yeah. that we both have of our parents watching our content. Mm hmm. Although now I really want to promote. Uh, I don't remember the full name of it. I'd have to look it up, but I'm very lazy right now. But there's a Chiluminati game that is really funny. It is a point and click, like little silly adventure. Big fan. You can check it out. Uh, it reminds you of like the old school, like LucasArts games where you can move around and be like, I wonder what this is. Very cool. <laughs> Love that Cute. stuff. Yeah. Um, I was going to say as a follow up, shout out to my parents who um, texted me the other day to say that they... <laughs> My dad, who does like still does not fully understand how my job works at all, I don't think, um, saw my VTuber model for the first time and was mesmerized. It was just like, how the fuck does this work? <laughs> like, like, so bamboozled. Mm -hmm. And I just love imagining my, my little hobbit dad just sitting on the couch like this, just watching the TV like, What's going on here? What is this? What, what is this? I know for a fact that that's how my parents react every time they see a VTube model. They're like, what is this? What the hell's going on here? What's 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 happening? <laughs> like, I get it. It's 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 like watching. So uh, Bernie Sanders was on with a bunch of streamers. OK. And they 100 percent hit him with with what I think was his first VTube model. Bless his sweet soul for just taking it all in stride. I would have been like, who the hell are you? What are you? What are you? I got a bunch of people in a cartoon. Who are you? I would have been, who, what is, what is your, what's your deal? I would have had so many questions. I love it. No, oh, I just thought that was really funny. Like, screenshots are great. Or it's just a bunch of like you uh, streamers. And then one single beautiful uh, VTube, which is just. Love it. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, worlds um, collide. Yes. <laughs> question for you. Yeah. Have you watched any of uh, the penguin yet? No, I still haven't. You gotta watch. It's we're trying to, really we're trying good. to catch it. We're trying to it's finish like really Shogun. Good. How do you not finish that? I was so pissed. I had to wait. I, <laughs> I breezed through that show. It made me so mad. I had to wait weeks for it to end. Show was great. Um, we just started watching it like a couple weeks ago. At least ago. two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, we normally only get through a couple of episodes of something per week. <laughs> sure. So, unfortunately, the way that our sleep schedules overlap, about two episodes in, I'm like, I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> I'm like falling asleep, you know. Sure. But I don't want to miss any. And I have a no. very bad, this won't surprise you at all. I have a very bad track record with, if I'm like, don't worry about it. I'm going to fall asleep, but you keep watching and I'll just catch up. I won't. I'll never catch up. Sure. Oh, yeah. I get the, it. The um, anime that we're covering for Anime Cult right now, um, that we're going to be like recording for in like a week or so is mm -hmm. um, an anime called Solo Leveling. It's got one season out. Uh, it hasn't continued yet. So we were like, let's just cover the first season. And um, I went to look on our Crunchyroll account and it said that we had watched all of it. And I was like, we didn't though. We only watched two episodes. 
So I was like, Sam, what the fuck is this? You watched the whole thing without me. And he was like, yeah, because you never caught up. You fell asleep. And I was like, no, that's bullshit. It wasn't. The more I thought about it, the more I was like, no, that's absolutely what happened. (laughs) As we tried to watch it together, I fell asleep and was like, it's okay. I'll catch up. I'll watch that episode. A week went by. He was like, did you catch up on solo leveling? And I was like, nah. And then he gave up and watched the whole thing. I can't fault him for that. But I was like, he watched it without me. <laughs> but I'm the monster. I, I'm the problem, actually, though. <laughs> yeah, I learned, I learned long ago that if I start something with someone, then I, I'm on their schedule. Yeah. So, which is why I don't start a lot with a lot of people. <laughs> I'm like, if I'm going to watch a show, I'm going to watch it on my own time. And then if you want to watch it, I will watch it again with you. But I'm not going to talk about it. I don't want to like, I'm not, but oh yeah, no, no. I'll sit there and just be like, oh, you're falling asleep. Okay. Pause. All right. Go to bed. Um, we'll watch later. I'm not, I don't want to, <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to do that. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm just going to start this on my own. This is, yeah. I'm fine. I don't need to wait. I have to have, I have to have like a couple of things that are me things. Like I'm watching this by myself. You can sit there sure. and watch it with me if you want, but this is like, this is a me thing, right? And then Sam and I will at any given time have like one, maybe two things that we're watching together. But again, it's always slow going. It's like a couple sure. episodes a week, maybe, you know? So if it's something that I want to just like devour, typically that's not the sort of stuff that Sam and I are watching together. It's stuff yeah. that we're enjoying, but I'm not in a hurry to get through it, you know? Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll find a thing, fix on, fixate on it, and then move on quickly. So you know, like I was saying with Shogun, it upset me that I had to wait week after week after week for it because I was like, just give me another episode. Um, yeah, even with uh, like Agatha all along is a is a great example of this, and that the show's fine. Like it is, it's it's a solid show. It's not like something I would consider like my favorite version of Marvel, but not really all Marvel is. However, the last episode was incredible. Like maybe one of my favorite episodes I've seen of anything in a long time. I was like, whoa, mm. this is really well done. And uh, I thought back to like, I'd probably be more forgiving on the series if it all came out at once and I got to sit there and watch it unfold and then get hit with like a really amazing episode. I'd be like, this series is amazing because they keep making me wait week after week. I'm like really pissed. <laughs> I was like, okay, they've been on this. Like I just, if we could, but okay, I guess I'll wait till next week to get that answer. Like, um, without spoiling too much, this week was like a huge payoff to a thing that's been kind of a mystery the entire time. And I was like, yeah. So I love that. But again, wish I had it earlier instead yeah. of waiting multiple. I was like, Okay, I guess I'll wait for next week. I was, and that's really I, tough to do when they're trying to tell like um a thing that's classic TV, Jesse. Oh no, I'm aware, but classic TV was different in that everything tried to have a payoff for the episode, like a little bit of a payoff, because they didn't think you would watch the whole thing or you'd come in later to a season or whatever. Modern day episodic TV is we made a movie. And we cut it down into eight episodes. And so some things are just, you'll watch it. You'll watch a show for like two episodes and nothing happens. Like it's a setup for something that's going to happen in the future. And you're like, (sighs) okay, well, great. Mm. And that uh, like, that makes me so mad. Like that's a, a big problem with a lot of, you know, streaming service TV is that it's a lot of, nothing happens, nothing happens. Then something amazing happens. You're like, wow, that's incredible. And it, again, it feels like it was designed to be released all at once. You could watch three episodes and be like, Oh, which I think honestly is the brilliance of what, uh, uh, arcane did. And to Mm -hmm. some extent, I absolutely think that, uh, the critical role shows doing it where they release three episodes at a time. So you can get like an arc. Yeah. Totally fine with that. It actually is really, really well done. Um, and I'm glad that it's like, okay, we're gonna do a setup episode and like a setup episode and then a climax. And they, they've done that, uh, pretty well, at least uh, those are two shows I can think of right now, but like it's happened before. And I definitely feel like we should get more like a great example is in penguin. Every episode 
gives you both an ending to what the objective was that episode, mm -hmm. but also a little bit of like, but next time it's going to get even crazier. And that's why I think it works so well as a TV show week to week where I'm pleased with every episode. I'm like, damn, that was amazing. Also, oh my God, next episode is going to be crazy instead of right. Okay. Well, like that was good, but next episode is going to be amazing. You know? Yeah. It's, it's more like, is this, is this sort of following more of a procedural format where there's an overarching thing, but, but there's also a small thing per episode. Right. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that a lot, actually, after I finished mouthwashing, oddly enough, because I was thinking to myself that mouthwashing, I don't know if it would have hit as hard if I hadn't had done it all in one go. Right. Um, and, and I do think that more stuff media wise is being made with the intention of you binging it. Um, but we had like this weird and maybe we're still in it. There's this kind of strange in the middle area that we're in where like things will be released every week but retroactively like looking back you're like that would have been so much better if i could have binged it <laughs> i felt yep. that way about um they they did a lot of like slow methodical setup shit with the very last season of hannibal if you've watched hannibal you know exactly what i'm talking about where there were like two or three episodes there where Jeannie and I were looking at each other like, what the fuck is this show doing? <laughs> you know? And it was getting to a point where we were like, I don't know. I'm not getting any, out of, as a viewer, it feels like I'm not getting any kind of a payoff here to like mm -hmm. watch this show, right? Um, and then finally we had an episode that went, oh my God, I see. Okay, yeah, yes, F fantastic, amazing, right? But there were three weeks there where we were so fucking over it, like just sure. like not enjoying ourselves at all. And if if we had been able to just like binge those episodes, it might have been better, you know, instead of just feeling like we were sort of spinning our wheels, wasting our time with a show that was maybe like diving into a hill. Yeah, it's uh, I, I see in in chat, and I actually agree with this. Everyone hating on the the Lord of the Rings show on on Amazon, uh, like people just destroying that show. But I was like, it's, I don't I don't know. It's, I don't think it's that bad. But I think it's because I binged watched instead of watching week to week. I can absolutely see how watching week to week would be like, no, this show sucks. Because there's some episodes where I'm like, what the hell even happened? Right? Like it was. It, it's not a great show, but binge watching. I was like, I'm following all the plot lines. I see what's happening. I, I get this like, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, let's, let's keep going. And I enjoyed some of it. Like some of it's, like I said before, some of it's still terrible. Like all the humans, they could edit out every human bit of content <laughs> from that show. And I'd be so happy. Like, yeah. I just don't care about the human storyline. Sure. Like, yo, I hate all y'all, all the humans, you trash, but the elves and the dwarves and stuff. I'm like, I love this. I love watching the bad guy be bad. Like, I, I, this is fun. So can I tell yeah, you? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I had not seen a single fan edit, a single, like a single thing for Rings of Power. And then suddenly I started getting fan edits of. Sauron? No. Oh. Durin and Elrond. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. The Durin Elrond friendship is, I actually love it. I don't give a shit what anyone it's says. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite part of the entire show, and I don't care. Uh, and I was people like, are like, it's damn, trash. Okay. I'm like, all right, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it's again, it's not a great show, but I absolutely am enjoying it. But I will not watch week to week. Sure, like it's one of those things where I just, I absolutely see the flaw in that. There's some things that just would make me go crazy. It's like there okay. is no mystery. You can have both. You can be like. No, this show isn't amazing, but I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. It's a, oh, both, that's both every CW show that ever existed. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I had to look that's people fine. in the eye and give them a list of shows that I have enjoyed the hell out of, but also say, and I think it's amazing and everyone should watch it, I could not do that. <laughs> Let me stress to everyone, I have on this show multiple times said, you need to watch are you the one season six? That's not a good show, <laughs> true. but that is one of the so best true. things I've ever seen in my entire but life. It's amazing. And you should yeah. watch it though. <laughs> it's not a good show. It's terrible. It's terrible trash TV, but like, Oh my God, love every bit of it. Yeah. yeah.
Yes. Goodness I gracious. Don't, I, I don't know. I'm 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 slowly over all the streaming services, but then I'm reminded things like, well, you could either watch uh, what we do in the shadows on uh, like FX at a certain time during the week, or it's all on Hulu. I'm like, <sighs> God damn it. Like that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, I could watch always sunny or watch 16 seasons on like that kind of stuff. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's my, I don't like it, but this is the world we live in now, I guess. Mm. Yeah. If uh, you were going to make a show mm -hmm. in, in today's climate, how would you release it? Oh, I would want to release it all at the same time. The problem is I've learned that that like, sometimes you're, unless you're a platform where it's designed for that, you were, you were hurt for it. Like there sure. was a thing I did as a test on YouTube where I rec we recorded a bunch of scary game squad and then I released all of them in s separate episodes in one day. Oh, wow. And YouTube was like, <laughs> no. And so <laughs> the drop from episode one to episode, you know, how, like usually if an episode one There's happens, drop. the drop, right. In the four episodes, this thing had, it was like first episode. Great. Second episode. All right. Normal drop third, fourth episode. We're not even gonna send those to people. I was like, cool, cool, nice, good to learn. Yeah. And um, yeah, I hate that stuff. I, I hate that the system's designed to not do that, but mm. also designed to get people to watch as much as possible. So it's like, yeah, 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 we want people to watch, but not your stuff. <laughs> like, okay, right, cool, yeah. Hmm. I, 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 would, I would release it all at once if I could. And I would make it uh, like, you know, nice 30 to 40 minute episodes. And they, you know, and it'd be, you know, depending on the show, like I could, I could probably pound out a good show in eight episodes. I could do it. You know what I was I thinking make it about happen. when Minecraft first took off and the standard meta was to just release a 10 minute video of Minecraft. Yep. And be like, see you guys next time. Looking back, I'm like, what the fuck did they even do in 10 minutes? <laughs> like a 10 minute video? That's nothing. But that was, that was so common. I mean, that's why the Oxcast I think was brilliant is that they made a story yes. in that 10 minute span. Mm -hmm. And then they kept releasing these stories. And so it was like, yeah, good work. Mm -hmm. And now we're, now we're in the era of Jesse releases three hour videos of scary game squad because eff it yeah i'd rather release one video that's three hours long than four videos that's you know uh 40 minutes a piece because that's the meta now the mm. longer you watch the better it is and so now you get big ass videos enjoy i do love a big ass video i was gonna just leave it at i do love a big ass i do I love could've... a big ass who doesn't <laughs> by I the way can big i ass. Yes. Hold on. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to send this to you. I want you to describe it to people. So the other day, <laughs> okay. I'm, I don't want to show this on stream on or, Dice because Gerd I'm not sure what or... the, I'm not sure what the legal ease of this is. Oh, okay. But, um, I, I yesterday or a few days ago, I was, look, I might've had an edible or two and I was looking at museum okay. art and I came yep. across this and was like, I've never been so turned on by a statue in my entire <laughs> life. I was like, is it because I'm high right now? Or do I? Um, okay. Is this the hottest it's, statue I've ever seen? It's um, it's a headless stone statue. It looks like it's been broken at the thighs before. So there's a big crack like on, on the thighs and a diagonal. Um, the outfit is very reminiscent of uh, the female character. I can't remember her name, but the main girl in Road to El Dorado. Um, sure. except, yes. except topless, big bedonkers, topless with a necklace going in between the tatas and then arms are missing. The arms have been broken off. Heads been broken off. Arms have been broken off. It looks like feet have been broken off. So it's just like, again, it is, it is a headless armless statue, but like for some reason, like this might be the most beautiful statue I've ever seen. It's like <laughs> hilarious. I'm like, God damn. I'm like, this statue is fit. I was yeah. like, I've never seen a statue like this before. Like, man, it is. 
you know how you see a lot of like Greco Roman statues and things like that, and it's like the the <laughs> the female form, like that kind of stuff. Sure. This is not that. This is like an anime, yeah. <laughs> like big booby statue. It's comical. This statue. Yeah. I was like, I don't know where they like. I don't know where they got this design from, but it's a good ass design. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Both of the boobs are broken, by the way. <laughs> oh, I'm aware. I'm like, one, of, again, one of them, it's not... like the whole front of it is just like rubble and the other one is chopped in half. <laughs> like it's uh, it's a mess, this whole thing. <laughs> oh, agreed. That's there is it's pure shame. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna deny that like again, uh, I questioned everything when I when I saw this like guys. It, Am I just really high right now, or is this the hottest thing I've ever seen in my entire life? Like, that's where I was like, guys, I, I'm down bad for this statue, and it doesn't even, oh it doesn't even have parts. Parts are missing in this. <laughs> I was like, oh boy, I got problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love art, baby. Were you <laughs> big fan? Big art fan. <laughs> big fan of art. I'll never like my favorite art trip. I love going to museums. I love looking at things, but mostly because uh, if I go with friends, I have like a really good time at museums. Sure. And my we favorite should go to a museum, museum sometime. Anyways, keep well, going. I would love to. You live near some of the biggest, best museums in the world. I know, and um, no one will go with me. So next I time would you're here, love to go. Let's do a museum uh, crawl. That'd be one so of my fun. favorite things was going to the Chicago Metropolitan Art Museum. I think it's what it's called with Crendor. Oh my God. Oh, Dukes. I'll never forget going through the like medieval art wing. Like, mm -hmm. first off, we saw, I, 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 you know what? I didn't see another sexy statue there. It was a statue from Thailand and it was like a big booty woman, but okay. what, but she's sitting, but her ass like hangs over the edge of the platform. And I was like, damn. <laughs> anyway, uh, shout out to art. But my favorite fan. part is, is if you go to the um, uh, like medieval art, area where you see all the different like you know little baby jesus's or little tiny like one it's hilarious to me that art in the renaissance used to be like a baby was just a tiny man that's one of my favorite things in the world it's just a little tiny man and yes. cherub art a grown ass cherub adult face is, on babies is so funny yes or uh cats and dogs that just look a little bit like people that's always funny to me but there's um there, there was every time you see cherub art stop and look at the scene because it's all my favorite is like there was one where it was a woman and she like had kind of you know like one boob out and the cherub like there was a bunch of people in the scene but there's like a lady with just one boob it was like the focus but mm -hmm. there's a cherub and it looks like he was flying by and then he saw half a boob and went, like put on the air brakes because you can see him <laughs> go like oh it's hilarious i laughed so hard and I was like, I know that's not the intent, but it looks like this little cherub saw a boob and was like, eh, hold up. I love it. I always think it's so interesting to watch. There are people who exclusively make videos um, talking about like the symbolism in different paintings. And it's so fascinating to me. Like everything in those old like Renaissance paintings had a meaning. Sure. And so they'll show you a painting that's like, a lady holding a dog with a dead rose in a pot and a man over her shoulder. And then they'll be like, this was the most salacious painting of this age. <laughs> and let me explain to you why. And I'm like, tell yep. me everything. <laughs> what do you mean? There's a dog. Is it the dog? I love it. I, I love, I love, not only is that fun, but then taking it to the next level and going to a modern art museum where it's the exact same conversation. It's like, these three lines are salacious. <laughs> the first line represents the, uh, the, the, the masculine, the second line, the feminine, but the third line represents the trend of morality throughout history to, and you're like, what, what are you like? Huh? Don't you see? <laughs> it's like, no, I don't see, but I love it. Please continue. There was one where at the, the Broad downtown in LA, it was an art exhibit where it was just like beautiful paintings, but then some dude painted Batman in all of them. <laughs> and I was like, yep. And then everyone was like, this is Batman that. standing on his yacht, but he's alone. There's no one else on his yacht. That is the loneliness that Batman feels. And I was <laughs> like, hell yeah, it is. This is reminding me of, there's, there are people that, um, especially around this time of year, actually, will go to um, like 
you know, Goodwill or other thrift stores, find old paintings that have been there forever, <laughs> take them home and then paint little ghosts in them. Like Pokemon. I've seen Pokemon for one yes. of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the number of people that will be like, ruin that painting. I can't believe you would do this. That was art. <laughs> and now what is it? You know? And the conversation that comes up of like, is it not art anymore because I put a tiny ghost on it? Or like, y- you know, it's, it's interesting. Dukes, it, yes. I think you would love this Alan Wake expansion. The, 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 <laughs> the newest one. Honestly, okay. so like the subtext of the I entire thing. come back around full circle. Sorry, keep going. The subtext of the entire thing is what is art. Mm. And you have two people, the husband and wife, who are trying to science art because the way the the evil presence in Alan Wake works is that uh, it sort of searches for artists and then uses them to like try to escape. And they're trying to figure out, okay, well, what kind of artists? And so there's, it's so funny because there's a lot of reports and things to find and discover in the game where it's like, okay, so what, what is art? Um, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to like try to list out what art is. All right, so like paintings, obviously, and movies, sure. And then, like they keep going through the list and like, all right, but like woodworking? What about philosophy? Is philosophy art? Like, if I, like and it's all these, like them trying to figure out what art is and quantify mm. art. And one of the characters is trying to make uh, like pseudo AI and uh, trying to determine if that's art. And they're trying to figure out wh- what what constitutes art. Is it about the artists? Well, who says you're an artist? Like, how do you become an artist? Like, that kind of thing. And the best part about it is there's a scene where you discover uh, a wall of all of these previously written um, Alan Wake copies where they try to get these old systems to recreate Alan Wake artwork, uh, mm. which is the books. And uh, it's hilarious. It is, like, the best spoof I don't want to spoil it because just read it. It's so funny, but it's like the best spoof of uh, like AI learning models where they're just so like hilariously bad. (laughs) And, and it's so well done. Like everything about the idea of what constitute art and Mm. how does art work? Because they're trying to like solve a mystery and the mystery is how does this thing decide who it chooses? Mm. And it's one of the, like one of the best parts of it. Yeah, it's it's a solid roast of AI, but also a introspective look onto what actually constitutes an, an artist or what is art. And again, in the game, they just list off every possible thing that could be art. And they're like, all right, it's you know what? It's like that um, billboard that PETA put out that I think is like <laughs> it's pretty interesting that people uh, online have been like doing this. But there's a there's a billboard they put out and it has all these animals and a line underneath. And it's like, where do you draw the line at what you eat? Right? Like that's the PETA mm, message, but okay. people online have been like right here. This is, this is the line for me. And they like, will draw it. Be like, I'm not going to eat that horse, but I will like, you know what? That pig, I'm going to eat that pig. And so they'll draw a line of where they want people like and actually drawing their line. <laughs> yeah. They'll, they'll take yeah. the image and then draw a line on it. And be like, yeah, that's where I stop. It's the same thing here in this game where they're just like, what is art? And so they have all these things that are like, well, I think it's like just these things or just this. Right. Absolutely. It's super interesting to see what they're trying to do with that. And um, yeah, I think it also goes to, to, you know, show kind of where they're coming from when you yeah. play those games. Cause like it's pure artistry. Those <laughs> games are, let me stress again for anyone who's not aware in Alan Wake 2, the original base game. Not only are there musical numbers, but there's literally, you can just watch it, a 15-minute art house crazy film Sam Lake made that you can just, you can leave, completely ignore it, or you can stay there and watch the entire thing. And it's one of the trippiest, craziest things I've ever seen in my entire life. And it's just in the game. You don't even have to look at it. It just exists. And they Mm. made, like, I was like, this... This is what I'm here for. This is what I want in my video games. Let's get weird. Let's have fun. So, big fan. Big fan. How long is Alan Wake 2? I'm sure I've asked you this before, but... Um, that's a solid question. I guess it depends on... So, there's a lot of uh, forest, and you can, like, explore the forest and, uh, like, get lost in it and find little things and explore. So like there's side quests and little things you can discover, but like sub 20 hours to do all of it, I think. Okay. That's not but too you can bad. put it on easy mode and just breeze through if mm. you want to cheese it. 
Um, on normal, I didn't think it was that hard. Uh, it's just one of those things where, again, you'll be like out in the woods and you'll hear, you'll see nothing, but you'll hear like, Wake. in the background you're like nah dude no nah. that's the same thing with these damn art monsters in the new dlc where you're like walking down it's like in the background you're like what the shit what is, what is that stop oh the sound design is terrifying they're monsters for that it's really well done yeah there's so much to play dude i get it i understand i still haven't i still haven't played more metaphor uh, uh. I mean, <laughs> I I completely understand. I have so many things. I mean, especially this week coming down the pipeline. Yeah, actually, what is I found one out? game that you'll love. I found one oh. game you'll love. The rest is is mainstream stuff. But I found a very good Dodger game. Yeah. Oh yeah. We'll talk about that whenever you're ready to get into the news. I'm ready. The only the only thing that I am excited for currently is um. Sonic X Shadow Generations, which is apparently overwhelmingly positively reviewed. I have Keanu to know. Reeves as Shadow, I have, coming I in have strong. To play it. I'm so excited. A good Sonic game? Don't play with me. <laughs> apparently, they added a bunch of Shadow story, which is hilarious to me. They were like, guys, we it. need to like really flesh out Shadow's story. <laughs> He's not just a hedgehog with a gun, okay? Everybody wants to kiss him. They have to do I something with him. They gave him they gave him Keanu's voice and that Shadow mm. isn't voiced by Keanu. I'm pretty sure it is. In this one. I'm pretty sure they brought Keanu in. In the game? Let's see. I'm pretty sure they did. Not in the game. I'm I'm pretty sure they did. Sonic X Shadow Generations. Oh, DLC Keanu. only. Never mind. Keanu DLC is in December. Never mind. Wait till December. Oh, yeah. Movie Pack DLC will be bonus content with Keanu Reeves voicing Shadow. I want that. Oh, man. I want that. Are you the kidding DLC me? The DLC is set in Tokyo, apparently. <sighs> uh, I love damn. it. Damn. I'm so I disappointed. I really wanted. I, I would have been like, I'll play it right now, but I, I'll wait till December, which is fine by me. Yeah. Let's. Yo, let's do the news. What, what okay. do we got? What do we got, bud? Well, uh, hey. Hey, everyone. Um, first off, let's start with the fact that it's Warcraft's 30th anniversary. Yes, the game's been around 30 years, uh, and they're going to do a whole stream about it. They're doing a whole thing, but of course, because Blizz can't do anything just good. They have to do one thing insane, and that is the release of a $90 mount, <laughs> which bless, um, okay. that was a mount <laughs> that you had to, it required a lot of, a lot of in-game, uh, currency for and now they're like f it where you can buy it and uh it's it's a lot of bucks to get that so people are not pleased with that but uh yeah 30 years of warcraft so we're talking like not just wow but also all the games that came before right and, um Damn. yeah no it should five million gold a lot of gold it's a lot of gold um a lot of gold and so they're, they're charging a bunch of money. Bless their sweet souls. I wouldn't buy that. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, you know, again, every time Blizzard tries to do something where it's like, let's honor something. There's always like a weird like money thing to it. It's like, yeah. eh, for 30 years of our game, we'd like to celebrate by taking more of your money. Right. <laughs> like it's, a weird, it's a weird vibe. Yeah. It always has been. It, for some reason, it can't be like, here's a gift from us. Thanks for supporting us for so long it has to be I mean, they do and here's like a every year they'll do gifts thing. yeah like every year they'll do gifts uh, the thing is the funny thing is the one time they did like a real physical thing was you had to have been subscribed for the entirety of 15 years oh okay. if you missed one month you didn't get the statue oh damn yeah, i never liked that i always thought like if you if you subscribed on day one you were still playing even if you missed yeah. one month or whatever, like you should have got that statue. For but. sure. If you've been in some way supporting at the beginning and even still now, then it should've should count. It. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I didn't get one because I, after uh, Mr. Pandaria, I stopped playing for like a year <laughs> and then came back to it afterwards and they were like, sorry, bitch. I was like, fine. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, but like, Every once in a while, they'll, they'll, they'll give you things every year for the anniversary and stuff. But again, it's always a weird vibe to be like, we're celebrating with great deals for you. It's like, <laughs> <Right>? okay. 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's the equivalent of like a mattress sale on President's Day. Like, right. yeah, all right, it's a weird vibe, but like, okay, I'm not gonna whatever. Um, then I hope you're all excited because we have got uh some interesting news in the way of Balatro, a game that I have uh never once played but watched about 20 hours of other people play. <laughs> Um, I don't, I've never found it very fun for some reason. I think it's amazing to watch. I watching skilled people play. I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at those combos. Octo. Very good at it. Mm. Uh, well, Bellatro, uh, has a new DLC of four new skin deck skins, I guess is what they would be. Okay. Cyberpunk binding of Isaac. Slay the Spire and Stardew Valley. So you can get cards that have all your favorite characters like Isaac and one of the townspeople from Stardew <laughs> that I don't know their names. Um, looks very neat. Uh, I will say, where's the monster prom one? Where's the, where's the <laughs> monster prom cards? Uh, come on now. What's up with that? What's going on there? Uh, in... Kind of sad, interesting news. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where to go with this. Uh, mm -hmm. A game that I loved, that I don't know that anyone else played but me. Prince of Persia: Lost Crown. The yeah. dev team behind it is a port uh, reportedly disbanded. Um, yeah. Ubisoft said, like, no, 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 it's not. Nah. They just moved them to a different team because the production cycle ended for the game. Uh, but that just means there's not going to be a sequel. Is what yeah. is what that means. I'm really um, bummed about that, to be honest. Yeah, I love. Love that game. Prince of Persia, the, the Lost Crown was very good. Uh, it was clear that they were in a rush story wise because some of the, they're, like, they're a straight up a character in the beginning who shows up and then never shows up again. And I was like, oh, they addressed that's, it in the DLC. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like there's, there's stuff that happens in the main game that they need to flesh out in future things. And now they're like, no, we're not doing that anymore. It's, it's like, oh, okay. such a good game. I, oh, I'm so It's upset. really good. The I still think about the fight against the uh like the plant queen, whatever the hell her name is, where she rides the dog. That's yeah. one of the most visually stunning. If you I don't remember the so name of that cool. fight. Just if anyone wants to take the time, please. Maybe we'll even include a clip here, but probably not. But please go look up that scene. It's like a forest like Prince of Persia Lost Crown Forest boss or whatever. One of the coolest fights I've ever seen. Like, just beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole, like, uh, I don't even know what you would call that style where you, where they fight, but it does the shadow of, like, the red background. Kiana the Forest Queen. Yes, thank yeah. you. There's, like, the shadow. There's, like, you, your character's in shadow, but there's a red background. You get that, like, really cool fight effect. Just, like, so many cool moments that game. And they straight up just are like, nah, no more of that. And it's really upsetting because it honestly, a lot of Ubisoft's more indie focused games, obviously not indie. It's, it's Ubisoft, but a lot of the more indie focused games I've loved, like, uh, mm. you know, Valiant Hearts and all those different things. Like they're just so well done. And then they're like, no, nah, screw it. We're going to make uh, another Assassin's Creed. <laughs> it's like, all right, cool. I was Great. really hoping we'd get a follow up. After that game, because I thought it was so good. So, yeah, yeah, this is insanely disappointing. Again, there's so many, like, little story bits that they very clearly are, like, setting up for something to happen in the future. And I was like, cool, can't wait to see where this goes. Nope, nope, it's like a Netflix show. They canceled that shit. I was like, oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's fun. That's neat. Um, Interestingly enough, turns out in the world of social media, since we talked about that a little bit today, that um, Nintendo Switch is doing some online play testing. And one of the conditions of joining the play test is you're not allowed to share any information about it. <laughs> and yet people are streaming it online. So I just, it reminds me every time that I go to any event anywhere for any game, people are like, please do not show anything early. Do not talk about this early. Yes. Do not do anything early. And then like, Within days, someone has released a video like, here's my thoughts. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I, okay. Like, well, I guess you're not getting invited back. Like, good job That's on the, the scoop, thing, though. Right? Is like, 
sure, I guess you got to be the first guy out there with info, but like they are never going to trust you with info again. Yeah. <laughs> like it was that I, worth it. I ne- I've never understood that. I don't know what the deal is, but yeah, like it's weird to me that I think people will, uh, you know, when they like get invited to a, an event, they'll just talk like really positive about a thing. Cause they want to be invited back, but there's, a total flip side where people go to an event just to be like, hey, 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 I'm going to show all your information early. I'm like, what is they're both stupid, but like, what a weird, mm. I don't know, man. Yeah. So yeah, I guess th- there's footage out there of uh, the, the switch stuff now. So that's, that's neat. Um, <laughs> speaking of play testing, if you live in Boston, I believe I'm going to look this up, but I think it's just Boston. Or Vancouver, mm-hmm. CD Projekt is uh, looking for participants for unique opportunities, as they say, to influence the development of future games. Mm. So if you're in the area, you can play test stuff. So Boston is where I believe they're making Project Ryan, which is the next cyberpunk. And uh, yeah, I guess they're trying to get testing done. So if you live in those areas... Nice. They're, they're they're asking for you. They're asking. So give that a go, I guess. Sick. Yeah. And um in the world of entertainment, in the world of cool stuff out there, uh, I guess uh Amazon's live action Yakuza series started yesterday. Oh. And the first three episodes are out. I don't know a damn thing about it. I haven't seen any of it. I'll give mm-hmm. it a shot. Sure. But uh that is a thing that exists now. So we, we shall see, but I didn't even know that that was out. Um, yeah, I don't know what the, the backstory, it sucks, but I will be watching. Well, there you go. <laughs> now we know. All right. It sucks, it's but just, I'll watch yeah, every yeah. episode. And then, um, in the world of releases, obviously life is strange. Double exposure is the 29th. And then immediately afterwards is dragon age, the veil guard on the 31st. And both of those are big. They'll be huge. Uh, you know, I hope to find time to play either of them. Maybe even get Dodger to play I Double Exposure. I would love for us to play Double Exposure. Exposure? I would too. Sure. Exposure. <laughs> That's Explosure. what we play. Exposure. Uh, but there's one other game that I'm going to put on your radar. Okay. Called Ghost Town Pumpkin Fest. Yes. And it. Sorry. Explain. Do you know this? Do you know this game? I do know about this. Yes. Please explain it to the world. Um, I, I, you might have more like specific information than I do, but correct, correct me if I'm wrong as I go. Okay. It's a game where it is a, a short, like seasonal MMO in which everyone's a ghost. Yep. It will only exist for the Halloween season and then the servers will go away. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) <laughs> and you are just a ghost in a little town hanging out with other ghosts playing and games. In or... this one, not only the little mini things to do, but the whole thing is a pumpkin pumpkin carving competition. That's what it is. Where every one of the ghosts carves a pumpkin and then you put it in the town and then it is judged and then given awards based on which pumpkin carving is the best. That's the game. It yeah. exists for exactly one little season for for Halloween and then shuts down. So and cute. so this is you're just pumpkin carving. It's the people who made a short hike, I think. Is it? I think so. Amazing. It's so cute. I love that. I love like yep. I love things that are intended to exist in like a, a small space, you know? It's like yeah. this is this is a thing. That isn't going to be around forever. You know, it's just mm-hmm. a thing to experience. I think that's cute. And sometimes uh, they work out great and sometimes they're a mess, but it's nice that people are trying to do them. And this one just looks so cute. It has mm-hmm. the same vibe as that fishing game you were talking about, except you're just logging in to carve a pumpkin. And then you can walk around town and look at other people's pumpkins. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, again, if we're people asking, it is called Ghost Town Pumpkin Fest. Very cute. I believe it's on itch.io. The old itch.io. The old itch.io. The old itch.io. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is the news. 
Well done, my dude. Claps and Thank snaps. <laughs> I can't Perfect. snap with this hand. I feel like it would be more <sighs> impressive if I could like snap, 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 clap. I could pretend. It's like saying you watermelon, could. watermelon when you're in choir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good. This is a good visual bit. No audio for anyone just listening. <laughs> for those of you who have never been in a situation where you had to sing in front of people, um, occasionally you will be told by uh, the person who is is teaching you what to do that if you lose your train of thought or don't know what's going on for a second, you can just mouth watermelon. And then it'll generally, to the viewer, look like you know what's going on. This doesn't work quite as well if you are in one of the groups in the choir, because it's all split up by, by like vocal sure. range, right? If you're in one of the groups that only has like two or three people, like I was, <laughs> if one person drops out and is like, watermelon, 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 very noticeable. <laughs> Can I ask you? I know yeah. you've been taking singing lessons. Yes. Would you grace us all with a song really quickly? Just any song. doesn't matter. It can be anything. Okay. Ready? <clears throat> I just want to <clears throat> test this. Okay. I'm a buff baby that can dance like a man. I can shake a my fanny. I can shake a my can. I'm a tough tootin' baby and I'll punch a your buns. Punch a your buns. I can punch a your buns. And if you're an evil witch, I will punch you for funs. Did it work? Chat, do we have confirmation that it looked like I was singing? Did it look like Jesse was singing that? Did I? Did I? To me, not at all. <laughs> to me, did not look like it at all. But was that? Did it, nope. I think, I think you got to blend in with a, with a crowd of singers, maybe. <laughs> all right. I just... <laughs> I didn't, I, you know, maybe, maybe I get, yeah, maybe I should have tried to watermelon to the beat instead oh, of just saying baby. watermelon, watermelon over and over again. Watermelon, 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 right? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of tongue action when I say watermelon. Yeah, true. And I feel like that's too much tongue action for what you were singing. Cause I was like, like, yeah. like that's too much tongue. I'm a buff baby that can dance like a man. Not nearly enough tongue action. That's so yeah, true. Not nearly enough tongue. Too much tongue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well, we well, tried. We've learned a thing today. Yeah, Maybe we'll try this we, again we, another time. We myth bustered this, and that is, is plausible, we but did. I don't think it's real. This is on the same level as will my eyeballs pop out of my head if I sneeze and keep my eyes open. Exact same level. Same exact level. Exact same. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do a crossover someday. We'll get those guys on Geek Enders. <laughs> Adam, is it true that if you say watermelon, watermelon, why you... We tested it, but like we're not the scientists, you know. <laughs> we don't have a science background. Yeah. <laughs> oh mm -hmm. my goodness. Fantastic. Hey, Jesse. Y'all. What are you up to this week, dude? What's your life like? Uh boy, I'm gonna try and play some more metaphor, try to get that done. Uh for those of you who haven't seen Fear the Spotlight, um, what an incredible game. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to spoil that. It's an amazing horror game, but not jump scares. Just like uh, a very solid horror narrative about two girls in high school and a giant spotlight man. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Um, I discovered it, when you play it, there's like a whole other story. And so mm -hmm. that will be on Monday for people who are interested in more Scary Game Squad. That'll be a thing. And uh, yeah, more metaphor. And then I guess on the 31st, whatever day that is, Friday, I don't know. Um, I'll probably either that day or the next do Dragon Age, but that'll be something we talk about next week, probably. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I have no idea, but uh, yeah, just a lot of stuff. I honestly, to be honest, if you want to know what's probably going to happen, about 50 more hours of Hollow Cure. Save the fans. <laughs> <laughs> I love that game. I can tell, dude. <laughs> I just something about I'm it. I'm gonna have like, to play it. Apparently, I don't know anything happening, and I love it. That just says a lot. I'm like, I don't know what this is. I don't know how that, that does works. say a lot. Honestly, that's like no. a really good. If if you're getting thrown neck deep into the lore, and you're like, I'm still having a great time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on, but like it plays 
so well. Like it is mm. fun to play. Right. Like, oh, okay. Hot dog. Yeah. What are you up to this week? Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll play that. Maybe I'll play play the Spotlight Man game. Oh my God, you love it. Um, maybe under five hours to do everything. Okay. I'm not sure what the time is, but it's like. It's it's a it's a solid it's Blumhouse's bad. first horror game that they're releasing and they're like indie horror spotlight thing. Big fan. Love all the stuff. Awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe I'll maybe I'll play that. Um yes. Yeah, I really want to play while we wait here, which is like a only a two hour game, so I'll probably be doing that at some point this week. Uh our oh, yeah. odd taxi episode of Anime Cult, Anime Cult. Uh episode just went up on all the podcasty things if you would like Ooh. to uh listen to that and i think that's about it for new stuff going on with me um Oops. if you are watching this live jessup and i are gonna um play some of the jackbox survey stuff Yo. with chat after this Yo. episode is done so that vod will exist you know somewhere for people to watch later if you'd like to sure. um but otherwise yeah uh, speaking of vods geek enders always exists on youtube.com slash jesse cox uh we are on all of the podcasty things and um i think that's it is there anything else we need <laughs> to talk like, about and and <laughs> nothing that's, and that's it. it i got nothing i got nothing Beetlejuice, right, cool. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yep. Oh no! There's God. I wish I knew who this artist was. Maybe I shouldn't even mention it if I don't know the name of the artist. But uh, there's a person who's been doing comics that are the three Beetlejuices like interacting with each other: the Very musical cute. Beetlejuice, movie Beetlejuice, and cartoon show Beetlejuice. And they're all, you don't think about how different they are. <laughs> they're totally <laughs> different. Some, all three are completely different. They're completely different. different characters. It's so funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. This person is very talented and like really highlights their differences. And I, God, I wish I knew who the artist was. Um, but go look it up. It's fantastic. Very Anyways. <laughs> hey, have a great week. Have a safe week. It's going to be Halloween and all of that cool. sort of stuff coming up here. Um, so yeah, have a safe, fun, lovely time. Dress up, be merry, etc. If you're somewhere that celebrates it, um, we will be back. We'll be back doing the dang thing. So the thing we do. We'll see you then. Uh, but again, hey, stick around. We're about to remember the Jesse Cox two hundred thousand challenge. I'm still waiting to get that tattoo. It's up to you <laughs> to make it happen. <laughs> Absolutely, one hundred percent. We'll see you next time, gang. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you're all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt.